Welcome to Fearless Friday. I really wanted to do something special for you this weekend. So I've got a challenge for you that I want to start today on Fearless Friday. And then we're going to continue the process into Sunday uh, when I put out the uh, Sunday Fundamentals video. So let's dive right in. As a challenge this weekend, I really want to start to work with your ability to become powerful uh, communicator with women. I want to get through at a lot of the internal garbage that holds you back with women, whether that's approaching, whether that's conversation. A lot of that has to do with the internal dialogue that goes on inside yourself. I'm not good enough. She won't like me. I don't know what to say. I don't know how to say it. Uh, I feel really nervous. I want to hide. I want to pull back. All these little stories you tell yourself internally Internally, that stop you from being the best version of yourself with women. You see, you're telling yourself all day stuff all day long. You're, you're speaking to yourself internally and you're having this conversation with yourself. And it's not just words, it's feelings and emotions and all kinds of stuff that hold you back from being a powerful communicator. And we want to start getting in touch with that. It's something we call reporting the details. It's diving in deeper into what those conversations are, starting to turn on the observer in a sense, for those of you that understand that process. The observer is basically that part of yourself that can watch yourself think. They can watch yourself have emotions and feelings and sensations and all this stuff that comes up inside of you. And as we turn on the observer, you start to get perspective. You start to be able to detach from those emotions and feelings. Most of us are very identified with the bulk of our thoughts, feelings, and emotions. What does that mean? What does identified with it mean? It means that we're very much feel like we're one. Like, like when I say to myself, uh, I'm not good enough. There's a sense that I buy into it. It's, oh, I'm not good enough. And then you want to go distract yourself from that thought because you think it's true. You want to go drink. You want to go masturbate. You want to do something crazy. So you don't feel the pain of that emotion because there's pain associated with that thought. And what we want to do is start learning to see that stuff and not take it so personal. Learning to be able to process it and, and be with it. So that's what we're going to start this week. We're going to start a process and I'm going to issue a challenge to help you get through that stuff. So how does this work? How do we process these emotions? Well, it's very simple. I want you to go out and get a journal, just a small journal. I used to carry one that's about this big around. I carry it in my back pocket. And I want you to keep that journal with you. And I'm going to challenge you to go out and do some action this, this weekend. I want you to do it Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in relationship to socializing, talking, flirting with women, uh, dating, whatever you can do at your level. And I'll go through some examples of that. You can go out and just simply do highs. You can simply do little muddled highs starting with that. You can do bigger bold highs. You can walk up and, and uh, do indirects. You can be direct. You can ask for phone numbers. You can go for instant dates. You can be really boldly direct. You can do any range of stuff, but I want you to play at your level. What does that mean? Well, if on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the, uh, the highest, like that's crazy, like it's, uh, my head's gonna blow up, that's so much tension. I want you to step into just enough tension that it kind of pushes your boundaries a bit. I want you to play. So play with the threes, fours, fives, maybe an occasional six and back down again. Really stay at that three, four, five level. Stay away from the big numbers because in those big numbers, we tend to start state pumping. It'd be very easy for me to walk down the street and start saying hi to everybody if I just lock out of my body a little bit and, st and stop feeling, stop, turn off the observer and just start being really bold. I can do that. I've been able to do that for many years. And I walk down the street and be like, hey, what's up? How you doing? How you doing? And there's this fake persona that starts to be put on. And I can do it really well to the point where people will still enjoy me. But in the end, I still don't get all the processing I want. So. I'm going to invite you to tone that back just a little bit if you're doing that. Now, the other side of it is you don't take any risk at all. You're so meek. You're so quiet. You're like, you're like, I'm not going to try anything. I don't want to do anything. And you might, that guy, if you, if you feel like you're really playing small, you might need to push a little bit to get to that three or four. That person is typically afraid of tension. He's afraid of being vulnerable, either tension or vulnerability. He's afraid of stepping into those energies. So notice which one you are. And if you're not sure which one you are, try both for a little bit. Push a little, a little hard and then play, pull back and play a little smaller and see how you feel. Now, the key is you're going to start writing down the thoughts and feelings that come up. You're going to report the details. Uh, you're going to go do like, let's say you're doing highs and you do 10 highs and you're like, hey, how you doing? 
And, and I'm going to give you examples. For the meat guy that wants, that's really scared to be big, he might be like, hey, how you doing? That pushes his boundaries. Hey, how you doing? Like a little quieter. For the bold guy that's more confident, he might be, hey, how you doing? What's up? Hey, hey, how you doing? As you walk down the street saying hi to people. Maybe you do 10 in a row. Hi, hi. Hey, how you doing? How you having a beautiful day? And you start nodding to people, you catch in their eyes and you start flowing from that place. And you do like 10, however many you feel comfortable with, you know, get a good amount going. And then I want you to write down the details of your experience. You know, I felt really raw when I said hi to that person. Oh, for some reason, when I said hi to the super cute girl, I really wanted to pull inside. Oh, when I, when I got really um, triggered, I got really triggered by that big guy. He really made me nervous. Or for some reason, I was feeling really good. And then about six of them in, I started to really want to close up inside. And I could feel my body tightening. And I could feel the energy rising. I want you to get really detailed. I could hear myself inside telling myself, you know, don't do it. Stop. You're a piece of shit. I could feel myself attacking myself. I don't want you to attack, literally attack yourself. I don't want you to write down, I'm an asshole. I'm a loser. I want you to write down, I could hear myself telling myself I'm a loser. I could feel the sadness and I could feel my heart closing and tightening right here. I could, I want you to get clear about that. I also want you to get clear about the good stuff you're feeling. Oh, I felt really empowered. When I said hi to that girl and she smiled at me, I felt my body lighten and open. I felt myself uh, uh, ground into the ground. I could really feel my legs on that one. I could feel my whole body. Or it could be the other way around. I couldn't feel any of my body. I don't even remember feeling my body. So these little details are huge and they really make a difference. So start to pay attention to the type of details and then write them down. And I want you to do maybe four or five rounds of this a day at whatever level you can do it, whether it's highs, again, indirect stops, stops, uh, tension openers, you know, uh, being really boldly direct, uh, asking, just boldly going up and, and being really direct and asking girls for phone numbers right away. If you're not sure what to do, go back and look at some of the past Fearless Friday videos from the highs forward to like Anthony's, you know, when Anthony talked about asking for phone numbers when, uh, right away, you know, being really bold and start to find one that works for you and start to apply it and then use that as your baseline. And so for highs, you might be do, do 10 or so before you write stuff down. For stops and direct stops, you could do one and then write it down. If it's really boldly direct or a stop, you could write some, so one, do one, write it down, do another, write it down and get really clear. So you got to find a good balance. If it's highs, they go quick. If it stops, they take a little longer. If it's direct and you're really going for that instant date, it might even take a little longer versus quick hit and runs. Quick hit and runs would be like, hey, you know what? You, your eyes look beautiful. I just want to tell you that. Hey, have a beautiful day and boom, you're off. And so you're gonna, you're gonna notice what works for you and then you're gonna journal the experience that's coming up, especially if you got something really bubbling up big time, journal the details about that experience right away. And then on Sunday, we're gonna come together and I'm going to start talking about processing everything that's up in this, that you've written down over the last three days. And you're gonna start to learn to Get comfortable with it, let it go, play with the vulnerability of it. And this is really gonna affect not only your confidence when you go out, if done over time, I'm gonna say that again, if done over time, over a consistent period of time, not just the three days, but done over several weeks, a month, two months, it's also going to affect your communication. As you get more comfortable in your own body and you start to release all this garbage, which you will, you start to release these stories and these thoughts that are coming up. You start to open up naturally. You're gonna find you're gonna open up faster and faster. Each day you might still feel a little stuck, but you're gonna find the body starts opening faster and faster as you get through it and weeks on, you know, a week in, two weeks, three weeks. And then you're gonna to start to find that your conversations get better, just naturally. Because as you become more comfortable in your own body and you start to feel your own body more and you start noticing in your journaling, wow, I'm really feeling my body here. Then you're gonna to begin to relax and enjoy the person in front of you through your body. You're gonna be able to say, hey, wow, I really feel my heart open to this person. I really feel my turn on for this person. You're not gonna take it personal, so you're gonna be able to really just be with her and have a good communication. And that's the goal here, okay? So that's what we're gonna be working on. So, so start this process right away and then get back to me on the Sunday video so we can start learning to process this. Get all this journaling down. Now let's talk about different things you can do to trigger the stuff that you're gonna write down. First obvious one is just doing highs. As you walk by, it could be little highs. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Maybe they barely even hear you or don't hear you. Um, 
you know, and, or maybe you only say hi to people that you make eye contact with. I have some people start with that that are really shy. Walk down the street and just look for people, like walk on a narrow walkway with a lot of people, if you can, instead of a really wide road, and look at people. And when people make eye contact with you, nod, smile, say hi to them, and stick with those people. Because some people will look down, some people will be more present, some people will notice you. Here's the caveat. As you get more present in your own body, as you get more solid and grounded, more and more people will start to catch your eye. As you're less present, less people will catch your eye and you'll start to notice that. Then maybe you get a little bolder and now your highs are like, hey, I'm gonna say hi to everybody that passes for the next 10. Hey, how you doing? Even if they're not looking, I'll say it loud enough for them to hear. And you get bolder. Maybe a next level might be you're throwing out compliments. Hey, how you doing? A nice jacket. Hey man, cute dog you got there. Oh, I love that dress on you. You look great. Um, hey, cool hat, man. And you just keep rolling along. You don't have to throw out a compliment every time, but maybe whenever a compliment catches your eye, you're rolling along and you're doing high, high, and then you see something you really like, dude, that jacket's bad, badass. And what I want you to do is make the compliments as genuine as possible. Don't just throw out compliments for compliment sake. Another level might be to just stand there in a high traffic area and say hi and throw out compliments. Standing there adds a whole nother level of tension because you're not running away from the person. You're not saying hi and getting past them and, uh, and going from there. Now, one of the caveats on the hi is you want to say them early enough so that people can hear you turn and lock eyes with you. Don't say them at the last second so their heads go boom like this and you're already half past them. So early enough so that I'm like, hey, how you doing? And then you lock eyes and you smile at that person. Or you, if I'm looking at the camera, I lock eyes and I smile at the person in front of me. So that would be the next piece, okay? Other ones you can do is you can do stops. You can walk down the street and stop people. Hey, do you know where Starbucks is? Do you know where um, hey, that store, you, maybe they have a bag, the Converse store on their bag or something. Hey, do you know where that Converse store is? I was looking for that. That could be another one. And you could go from there. Um, you could try to extend the conversation. Hey, ask one question. Hey, do you know where uh, the Starbucks is? Oh, awesome. You know what? I've been dying for a coffee. Um, you, look like, uh, you look like somebody loves coffee. Where, where's a really, if there's no Starbucks, what's a really good coffee shop around here? Just start a conversation. Um, another one might be to be a little bit more direct, but with a compliment, not something so personal. Like, you know what? Your jacket's awesome. Where did you get that jacket? Oh my God, I'd love to get a hat like that. Your dog's awesome. Do you mind if I pet your dog? And start chatting. You can mix these in with the highs. The next level might be to be a little more direct uh, or to play with tension, actually. Um, my favorite was always, hey, what's your favorite color? I just find random questions to ask people that are awkward on purpose so I could ground out the awkwardness. Hey, what's your favorite color? Oh, really? Blue? Man, you, know, you know what a color says about you. Oh, you don't? And then I'll just make some shit up. You know, blue means you're really a, you're either a really soulful person or you're a really sad person. Which is it? And this sounds like a routine, but it's, but it's more or less, I'm going to say it in a way that's fun for me. I'm going to have a good time with it. I'm not trying to get anywhere with it. I'm not trying to impress a girl with it. I'm doing it to practice playing with tension. Hey, tell me about your favorite superhero. You know, do you have one? Oh, you like Superman? Why? Why? People that like Superman always want to be perfect. You know, are you one of those people that wants to be perfect? I keep looking at somebody over here, like imagining they're standing there, so... Um, you know, so what question is fun for you to ask and just go out and ask it? I asked that, that what's your favorite color question a hundred times one day just to practice grounding people, men, women, everybody as a way of practicing grounding and being solid with people because it creates an awkward moment and it gives me an opportunity to ground that awkward moment, to be present with that awkward moment, to lead the interaction. And sometimes people will just walk away from me. They'll say, I don't want to answer you. And you got to deal with that and then write down and journal all the shit that comes up from that. It's really good and it's really powerful practice. Sometimes people would say, hey, you know, I, I, I don't have one. And I'll be like, well, mine's blue. Now you got to tell me. And sometimes they do. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they, they reject you. Sometimes they get pulled in and they want to have a longer, a longer conversation with you. Another one that you can do is just start to be more direct. You know what? I had to come over and say hi to you. I saw your eyes from across the room and there's just something about your eyes. You know what? I, you got a, a style about you. You got a vibe that's just amazing. Go for authenticity every time. Be really genuine with them because if you don't feel it, you know, you don't say it because it's not going to land, to be honest. You know, you, you know, you know what? That, that, uh, that dress looks amazing on you. You know, you got a grace about you. There's some type of grace about the way you move. You're, you know what? You're just damn sexy. I had to say it, you know? Um, 
And you could be more bold that way and then journal the stuff that comes down from that. So as you go through these levels, you start to journal all the, the details like I talked about earlier. If you don't remember it, go back earlier in the video and watch it of what's coming up as we're getting in preparation for Sunday. So that is your homework assignment for the weekend is to get really clear on that. Now, let me make sure I've got everything for you. You're going to get yourself a journal. You're going to report the details like I talked about earlier in the video. You're going to find the level on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being too much, somewhere that's a 3, 4, 5, maybe an occasional 6, but stay lower. And you're going to journal your experience and get out all the details. And you're going to do it in an objective way as if you're watching yourself from a distance, as if you're seeing yourself from a distance. There's a part of me that got angry right there. There's a part of me that got sad. There's a part of me that feels really raw. You're going to practice constantly opening your heart while you're doing it. Don't close and pull and wall off. I want you to constantly practice opening your heart while you're doing this. And you're going to get as many details as you can down in preparation for Sunday. So it's a simple assignment and you're going to learn a lot about yourself from it. You're going to grow a lot from it and you're going to get a lot of um, realizations from it. So you're going to start this on Friday. You're going to do it Friday, Saturday and Sunday. And, and then on Sunday, when my video comes out for Sunday, we're going to start learning to process these emotions, learning to let them go, learning to move through them, learning to not take them so personal, learning to laugh at them, learning to be feel more powerful in the face of them. And that's where you're really going to change. That's where your conversations are going to change. That's where your approaches are going to change. That's where you are going to change. What this is truly about is stepping into tension. You're learning to step into tension in a way that's controlled and just the right amount for you, just like lifting weights. If you go to do a bench press and the, and the bar is just too much weight, reduce it, get the right weight for you so that you can grow and you can learn and you can push yourself right to the edge. And that's where the real growth happens. It's when you push yourself to that edge that adaptation happens. So we're gonna work with our edge and we're gonna find it. We're not gonna to go too much. We're not gonna to go too little. People tend to do one or the other. That's why you're looking for that sweet spot. That's why you're journaling to learn more about it. That's why you're practicing opening your heart every time so you can feel a little raw. And that is the other key that I didn't mention. This is that if you practice opening your heart and even your stomach, the sense of relaxation into this part, that's what I mean by opening your relaxation into here, relaxation into here. And you get this sense even up through your throat that you feel kind of raw and open. That's where things will change when we do this work. If you're walled off and shut off and you're just pushing through like a tank, then you're not going to grow. Not, the, not much is going to happen. You're going to learn to push through things. So this is about getting really real and honest with yourself. Can you journal honest stuff or not? Can you be really real and without attacking yourself, just writing down what's coming up for you, just observing it? And that's where the change is going to happen. I know I keep saying that over and over that when you're teaching this stuff through a video and you don't, you can't just look at how somebody's doing something and give them corrections. You got to kind of say stuff over and over. So it gets stuck into your nervous system. So you get the realization. So you understand what's going on. Um, so do this today, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. If you're catching this video a little later, start where you're at and you can push it back a little bit. You can do the Sunday video on Monday or Tuesday and then, um, and then come to the Sunday video and we're going to start processing this stuff out of your system. And, I want, and another thing you're going to do is commit to doing this long term. This is a challenge for you to do long term if you want to take it on. You could do it over the weekend. You could do it for a week. You could do it for a month. You could do it for three months. Uh, some of my releasing videos, I've had clients do them for, I had one client do uh, the body scan meditation for eight, nine months before he came to my workshop. And when he did that, he killed it at the workshop because his body was so open and so vulnerable and so so raw and so real okay he was ready to learn and that is the key get ready to process information here and to really change at a deep level so hopefully you like this video hopefully you enjoyed it make sure to comment in the video below I want to hear your comments I want to hear your comments at the end of the weekend too so when you get to the Sunday video come back and comment in this one too make sure to subscribe if you haven't subscribed smash that subscribe button hit that like button and share don't forget to share the video we it really Really helps other people to grow if you know somebody that needs this kind of work and remember only the confident really live i'll see you on sunday